Good afternoon. Welcome to Friday's Inside Look by Brooks. Um, it's good to be here. My knee is on the mend. Now my voice is out. I have laryngitis today. So my man Josh here has uh, put the microphone close to, to my mouth so that I can, uh, hopefully you guys can hear me. We, um, in the Winter Haven office, we are having the uh, networking social with the Chamber of Commerce at the Winter Haven office on October 24th, uh, 5.30 to 7.30, I believe. So any of our clients are welcome. We're going to have a haunted house. Feel free to bring your children. And of course, any of the Winter Haven Chamber members are welcome too. Um, another, with, with November coming up, we are having our, our annual, I think our sixth annual turkey giveaway uh, at the Winter Haven office. Um, I believe it's the Saturday before Thanksgiving. And then at our Tampa office, we're having a, our first annual turkey giveaway. And that will be the week or two weeks before Thanksgiving on a Saturday. So uh, we'll give we'll get firm dates to you on that. But if you know someone that needs a, a turkey uh, to enjoy the holidays, then feel free to uh, shoot me an email, steve at brookslawgroup.com, and I'll get them all the details. Um, today, this year, Brooks Law Group undertook uh, um, sex trafficking as kind of our charity of choice, and I think we... We uh, supported the um, Baptist Children's Home, which is called, I think, One Child now, and um, a great organization. So we um, are proud to have partnered with them, and um, they do really good work. But, you know, when in researching sex trafficking, it is always um, eye-opening to realize that it happens right here in your hometown. Whether you're in a small town of 1,500 people or a big town of a million people, it's happening. And that came to light again today in a um, article that I was reading in the Lakeland Ledger um, about sex trafficking. And it talked about an actual a uh, sex trafficking ring that was operating out of two high schools, Riverview and I think Venice High School, um, where they were recruiting students to deliver sexual acts uh, for a fee. Um, so it goes, it goes on and it goes on everywhere. One of the great things this article pointed out is that Florida is the very first state in the nation to require sex trafficking education. This is a new rule by the, uh, the Board of Education in Florida, and I commend them highly for that. And it's gonna be age appropriate education. I think at the kindergarten level, uh, they'll be teaching kindergartners about what is proper touching. And if you're improperly touched, who to tell? Um, and then as the kids get older, they will um, have more age appropriate conversation will take place about uh, sex trafficking. But what a great thing that our our Board of Education is, you know, the first in the nation to intention be very intentional about bringing awareness to this very big problem um, by having a, in the curriculum of all schools in the state of Florida. So I commend them on that. Um, another startling fact that I read in this article was that one in 10 children, that's 10%, experienced some kind of childhood sexual abuse. And when I was a young attorney, just starting out doing social security disability law, I can't tell you the number of young female uh, clients that came into my office and were uh, had tremendous psychological problems to the point where they couldn't work, 
who had experienced childhood sexual abuse. You know, I was somewhat immune to that because I grew up in a very protective home with caring parents and a mother who didn't work. And um, I'm not saying that these women didn't grow up in a, in a great home. I'm just saying that it's out there. And I was shocked to see the number of women who had suffered childhood sexual abuse. And that goes for men too. So um, awareness is the key. And speaking of awareness, I kind of have a list here of things that you might want to look for in a, uh, in a younger person that you, you may think uh, might be experiencing any kind of sexual abuse or human trafficking. Um, does the person feel disconnected? Do they have um, any kind of bruising? Um, is the person fearful, timid, or submissive? You know, some, some people are just naturally more submissive than others. But if you notice a change in a person where they have become more submissive and more timid, you want to look for that. Um, and does, appear, does a person appear coached uh, to be what to say? These are small clues you might want to look for in a young human trafficking victim. Does a person... Um, are they in various stages of healing from some kind of injury? Um, have they stopped attending school? Have, um, do they appear to have freedom of movement or are they constrained? I mean, like, do you think somebody in the background might be controlling them? Um, and does a person appear to have a stable home life? So human trafficking, those people know what to look for in a uh, person that may have low self-worth or may be shy and timid. And those are the vulnerable people. So we just want to educate you to look for that too so that we can counteract what the, the bad guys are doing, the human traffickers. So again, I commend our Florida Department of Education. I commend one child. Florida Baptist Children Home for all they do for human trafficking. I hope everybody has a safe and wonderful weekend. And um, if you're going to say a prayer this weekend, say one for my voice. I need it. And again, if you have any questions for me, Steve at BrooksLawGroup.com. Always respond to everybody. Um, again, have a, have a wonderful weekend. We will see you next week, next Friday at 3 o'clock. For Friday's Inside Look by Brooks, thank you for joining me.